This video isn't designed to be a full guide to the differences between the PC and Mac versions of Photoshop Elements 10. Instead, we're going to look at some of the key differences that you are likely to encounter during the course. I felt it was important to run this video because we are getting more and more downloads from Mac users and I want them to have the same trouble-free journey through this course as the PC users will hopefully have. So I have the full editing environment open on screen before me and the first thing I'm going to do is to click on this reset panels option up here at the top and that will rearrange the entire workspace to match what we would have gotten if we'd have first opened Photoshop Elements right now. The other advantage to both you and I doing that is that we're now working with the very same screen and that's going to help us work together throughout the series. Now I'm working on a PC but Mac users who are also looking at their screen will be seeing something very similar. The main two differences will be that our controls for minimizing, maximizing and closing the window will be over on the left hand side instead of the right. And that's nothing new as we experience that difference regardless of what software we're using. It's just an inherent difference between Mac and PCs. The other thing is on the Mac is that we're going to see another menu option up here in the menu bar. To the left of the file menu, if you're using a Mac, you'll see an About Photoshop Elements menu, but we won't be using that very much throughout the series anyway. Just a FYI so that you know that it's there. The main differences we are going to see between the Mac and PC are the different names for the modifier keys. And what I mean by that is when we're using the software, pressing a key on the keyboard can act as a shortcut to a command or option or even a tool. On the PC, if we add the Shift, Control or Alt keys to the mix, we get another shortcut giving us the ability to literally have hundreds of keyboard shortcuts available to us. Now in order to see the graphic I have open, I'm going to press the Tab key here on the PC or on the Mac to fill the screen and then I'll press Control 1 here on the PC or Command 1 if we're using the Mac so that we can see it at 100%. This file reminds us of the differences between the two platforms. So when we use the control key here on the PC, we need to use the command key on the Mac. In the same vein, Alt on the PC is the same as using the option key on the Mac. And the shift key, incidentally, is the same for both platforms. And finally, there's a difference with the clicking of the mouse as well. On the PC, you'll find yourself right-clicking a lot to bring up context-sensitive menus or options. Some Macs don't have a mouse with a right button, so Mac users have two options. Either you can hold down the Command key on the Mac keyboard and then click, that will deliver the same thing as right-clicking on the PC, or you can get yourself a mouse that has right-click functionality. I highly recommend the latter option as having the ability to right click is so much easier and quicker most of the time. I've included this graphic in the project files so you can reference it should you need to, but during the course I'll give you the Mac equivalent as we're working anyway. Now one other thing to show you before we call it a day inside this tutorial, and that's the organizer. Come up to the organize button and give it a click right here at the top and up comes the organizer here on the PC. Now if you're using a Mac and you have Photoshop Elements 9 or 10 then you'll also be able to switch to the organizer as I have just done. However if you're on the Mac and you're using Elements 8 or an earlier version of the software then you'll find yourself using Adobe Bridge instead of the organizer. Now that's not a problem because they are both used for media organization and control but it is something that you just need to be aware of. There are going to be some substantial in some cases differences between the organizer and the Adobe Bridge but we're not going to be dealing with the organization of photos in this series so that's not really going to come into play very much anyway. Okay that's everything we need to go through Coming up next, we're going to be looking at installing the project files.